Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about colour boosts and this video is going to be for artists and clients alike to talk about the ongoing process of permanent makeup and the importance of the choices that you make with both techniques and pigments for the longevity of your work. What's your biggest struggle with colour boosts? Let me know in the comments. Hi, I'm Katie Schofield, artist and permanent makeup mentor. I help clients feel more confident through permanent makeup and I help artists advance their skills. You can train in person or online with me and I've put the links in the description for both. Also, I'll soon be offering a full mentorship package on all aspects of PMU, including courses and coaching. So register your interest now with the mentorship link. So let's talk about colour boosts. There's not much content geared towards them. It's mostly about the first session. That's where you're going to get the biggest transformation and the best photos. But permanent makeup is an ongoing process for clients. So what are the most important things to think about with colour boosts? Permanent makeup is a balancing act. We're trying to give our clients long lasting colour, but not too long lasting. We want it to be noticeable, but not too noticeable. And we want it to fade eventually, but not too quickly. Taking into consideration that every single client's skin, biology and lifestyle is completely different, it's good if you have a wide pigment and technique knowledge to keep treating clients in a way that's going to be positive for them long term. So first of all, let's talk about pigments. I'm a massive fan of inorganics, providing they have even light fastness and the different colorants fade at an even rate. The good side of inorganics is that they will eventually fade as long as your depth of implantation is good. The downside is that for some people they fade too quickly and I am always, always trying to educate clients on the fact that it is far better to have something fade than to have it permanently on your face. Your face changes as you age and your brows need to change with it. Making sure we can adjust it is paramount. If you have unfaded brows in the wrong place then the only solution is removal. So from the other side, clients want something pretty long lasting but won't be happy if that turns blue or grey. So once again, we're trying a balancing act of making sure we get even fading, but just not too quickly. To talk about the possible outcome of age treatments, I'm gonna use some case studies here. So the first few clients we're gonna talk about are clients who are ready for a color boost. How do you know when you're ready for a color boost? Well, there should still be some color present and the shape should be present as well. It's just a case of wanting that strength of color putting back into them. These brows were about a year old and she was really happy with how they'd aged, but she was ready to go a little bit bolder at her colour boost. So this time we went more for a hybrid that's going to last a little bit longer and be just that little bit bolder. When I'm talking about a hybrid, I mean that it's organic and inorganic. So a little bit of the best of both worlds with both minerals and carbon in. This client had had an inorganic pigment used the first time. The second time we found that they'd faded a little bit too much, so we went for a hybrid. She had slightly oily skin, and a lot of the time that tends to fade quicker. These had lasted really well, apart from the microblading at the beginning, so we decided to leave that out this time and just go for a straight ombre. So with permanent makeup, we're always learning from our clients and watching them over time to see how their skin responds and see if we need to change anything. Our next client's brows were just over a year old. They didn't really need a colour boost, but she really wanted them bolder. Her skin had responded really well to a hybrid pigment, and so this time we just took them a little darker. Hopefully that way it'll be a little bit longer between colour boosts next time. So all those clients had kept up with their brows and just wanted them refreshed. So what happens when you don't keep up with your brows? So my next client had left it nearly two years between her colour boost, and as you can see, her brows have faded quite a lot. She'd had an inorganic pigment used on her LI Aqua, and this had faded really nicely. You can see there's no warmth or strange colours there. So at the colour boost, I gave this client the option of going bolder, and actually she was really happy with how they'd faded and really happy with how they'd looked before. So we just stayed with the same one, and this is what her colour boost looked like. Not everyone wants bold or dark brows, so it's always great to be able to have an option of something more subtle. And if you want to avoid your brows fading prematurely, then use sunscreen on them every day. Going in the sun is the fastest way to fade your brows. So we've looked at some case studies where they started off lighter and then wanted to go bolder or stay the same. So what happens if you go too much too soon? So these next brows were not done by me, but these clients came to me for help in removal. So this client had had multiple sessions of microblading with an organic pigment. And as these brows have aged, 
the carbon has migrated and now you can hardly see the strokes at all. Also, the brow is incredibly saturated. There's no space for any new pigment in there. It is solid gray. There wouldn't even be a chance of color correcting this as there's no space in the skin for any new pigment at all. The only choice this lady has is removal. Choosing high pigment load, carbon pigments, straight off the bat will leave you nowhere to go if you want to go bolder. Some of these brows can be visible for 10, 15, 20 years on the face. And removal like we're performing here is the only option. This client is probably looking for around a year's worth of removal before we can even consider color correcting. This will take multiple treatments. We may never be able to get rid of all the pigments, so she will be stuck with some of that shape forever, and we won't ever be able to do microblading. She will have to have an ombre. Carbon pigments go into the skin so much quicker than inorganic pigments, and it's really easy to oversaturate. I'd advise all beginners to start with inorganics and only progress to carbons once your technique and depth is perfect. This next client is another client who came to me for help. She'd had microblading done with a carbon pigment and it was very dark and very gray. She went for a first session of laser, which took out a lot of the gray, but left her brows red. A second session of laser targeted the red, but she was left with this quite unsightly neon yellow. This will be down to titanium dioxide in the pigment, which the laser turns yellow. The only way to deal with this now is chemical removal until they're light enough to cover. This has been a long journey for this client who only had one session of microblading that was too dark, too bold and a heavy carbon pigment used. Her advice when speaking to people who say my brows faded is think yourself lucky. We'll be giving her beautiful new brows when we get rid of these three colours. Colour boosts are a really important way of staying on top of your permanent makeup. If you don't have them, then you end up back at the beginning and you end up having to have two sessions instead of just one refresher. Chopping and changing your artist is also not a good idea. There are so many different pigments on the market and you start mixing them all together, they're going to fade at different rates and you're going to end up with a patchwork quilt brow at the end of it. Sticking with one artist who understands pigments and can adjust the strength of your pigment accordingly is definitely the best way forward. I hope that helped understand that permanent makeup is an ongoing process and that clients are well looked after if someone is erring on the side of caution. I see far too many people coming for expensive removal treatments now. Also from an artist's point of view, if you go too heavy then it's you who will be left to deal with the consequences. Forums are filled with artists who are regretful of their earlier pigment choices. If you're still unsure about the differences in pigments, then watch this video, it's a really important one.